And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. My max bet for UFC uh, 300 is going to be Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to absolutely smoke Alex Pereira very early on, in my opinion, man. First locked. Oh my god, he's hurt! It's over. Oh my fucking god. Finally! Finally! <laughs> we actually won an event! Crazy man! Come on, five seconds! Get to the end! Fuck this or something! There's a way of guy! This guy's. Oh my god, I'm ruling this guy so far from the beginning! Get to the end, Buckley! Yes! Come on, baby! That's what I'm talking about! Two events! Finally! Let's go! Are we back? Are we back? Come on, baby! Let's go, Buckley! Huge man! Let's go! Stopped in this way, <laughs> holy shit. There's a swing for the fences. Oh, <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, Chaos! Three of them! Come on! Don't be up! We're back! We're back, baby! We're back! Finally! Three of us will get that fucking shit behind me! That absolute disgustingly bad street! I want a breath, boy! Come on, baby! Let's go! Seven point one nine. Yes boys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be breaking down UFC 302. Is that Mahashev taking on Dustin Poirier in the main event, boys? But before we do that, let me say where I've been for the past couple of months. I've been seeing you guys in my comments of old videos saying, where did this guy go? Did he off himself after uh, uh, his max bet lost in Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill? Unfortunately, that lost, bro. We're still 9-1 on one max bet, so we're doing pretty good there. But yeah, <laughs> no, I didn't. I I'm, I'm here, boys. I'm here. I'll, I'll just say where I've been the past couple of months. I've uh, I've been doing exams. I've been doing uh, assignments for my last year of college. I've been grinding away, bro. I've been really putting in a lot of time uh, so I can get a good grade <laughs> at the end of this course. So that's where I've been the past couple of months. I've had literally no time to do anything, but we're back and I'm very excited about the future of this channel. The, the content will be improving. The production of this content will be improving as well uh, very, very soon here. So stay tuned for that. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you are new because, you know, we're, I'm giving out some of the best predictions, the best uh, free bets out here on YouTube that you will see. So stay tuned for these best bets on Friday. And yeah, let me, uh, let me, let me let me just recap how we've been doing uh, since I've been away. I didn't really post any bets on Twitter, obviously on not on YouTube, because 
I was on such a bad streak, man. I, I didn't really want to post any uh, any of my bets on Twitter. We're up 62 units, by the way. So this is just like we're we're good at you know gambling. We're we're very very profitable and you know able to win some really good money. But yeah, uh, you know the past like uh, well. We're on a three event win streak now, but we were we were literally on a six event loss streak. But I want to just tell you the luck I was receiving, ladies and gentlemen. The luck that I was receiving, I, I don't know what I did. I, I'm sorry, MMA gods. I, 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 <laughs> I have no idea what I've done to deserve the luck that I was getting on that six event loss streak. And I'm going to go over some of the bets that I lost. And even on our three event win streak that we were on. Even on this three event win streak that we are on, we're, I think we've won like 15 plus units in the last three events. The luck that I've received in those th last three events that we won has been absolutely horrible as well. So, uh, yeah, my luck has just been absolutely terrible. And yeah, we're still, you know, three event win streak uh, right now. So, you know, it seems like we're getting our momentum going. But if we can get some good luck, man, a bit of luck in my favor... Uh, that would be much appreciated because we'd be winning a lot more. But yeah, you know, let, let's go over some of the bets that I've lost that were so unlucky in my opinion. So Randon, uh, what was her Deira Zelensikov since Zelensikova, I think her name was. Uh, I bet Randon at plus one eighty seven, and I thought she won. I think most people thought Randon won that fight. Uh, and then let's go to the New Jersey card. Petrovsky loses via uh, you know, literally dick butting. <laughs> I um. What's his name? Jacob Malkoon in the nuts, and I lost that bet. I had scorecards equals no action for Petrovsky. Over two and a half, Matthews versus Bazooka. Uh, you know, that looked like it was going over two and a half easily. I mean, <laughs> if we got to the third round, nothing really was happening. No one was getting hurt. Not really big shots were landing on either side. And then, boom, Bazooka cracks Matthews and puts him away. It <laughs> started to start round three. That was such a good bet. I would bet it again. It would probably, I got, I think it was minus 150. It would probably be minus 250 if they redid that fight. So, yeah, lost 2.5 minutes there. Let's go into PFL San, San Antonio. Ante Deliha loses via pulled groin 30 seconds into the fight. That was fun. Uh, Allen versus Curtis uh, card. Sharia robbed. Lost me a winning night right there. Uh, Bobby Green, UFC, this is UFC 300. Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Fight doesn't go to decision. Absolutely, I don't know how that went to decision. Both guys got hurt. It looked like Jim Miller was about to die in there, to be honest. Mark Goddard, you know, stops championship fights very early, but doesn't stop a guy that's 40 years of age on the end of his career. Uh, yeah, that makes so much sense. But yeah, uh, Zhang by submission, you know, Zhang literally, ha that was plus 600, by the way. Uh, Zhang had her dead in the first round. Uh, but no, of course, the bell saves. Um, you know, Jan in that fight, PFL, uh, Barzola robbed, in my opinion, I really thought Barzola robbed, uh, got robbed there against Borex, in my opinion, I think it was like plus 137, over one and a half in locked in, uh, that was a parlay piece to close out a parlay, over one and a half, locked in versus, uh, oh, I forgot his name, C Carvalho, I think his name is, um, one of the worst stoppages in UFC history, or UFC history, MMA history. That was one of the worst stoppages I've ever seen, so that lost me a lot of money there. Paros versus uh, Nicolau. Figlacht robbed of three units. Um, Yeah, literally robbed of, ro I got robbed of three units there. That was a winning night that cost me. Um, UFC 301, this is where we start to win money. Uh, Close uh so close survives i had I, I had silva by ku and his money line uh you know somehow uh silva just completely butchers the finish when close was almost dead on his feet that was annoying uh lewis first nascimento car tisha torres completely robbed i had i had her there uh uh, and then Buckley round three KU. Uh, that was plus one thousand. I had zero point three units. I think we won five units on that card. So we could literally could have won about ten units on that card if those two bets cashed like they were supposed to. Uh, but obviously my luck the past few events. Uh, well the past like two months has literally been the worst luck you'll ever see in MMA. Uh, and then Bar Barboza versus Murphy. Dakota robbed, losing me three units. We won seven units on that card. We would have won uh like twelve or whatever it would have been uh, if she didn't get robbed there so yeah there, there's been my th that's just a recap off my luck the past two months since I've been away from YouTube uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, <laughs> because it's been absolutely diabolical di 
yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, but we're on a three-event win streak right now. We're uh, doing pretty well for ourselves. So hopefully we can keep that momentum going in the UFC 302 and keep that betting, uh, you know, streak uh, alive. Make it four in a row. And uh, yeah, let's get back on the horse. Get that momentum that we had earlier on in the year. We were up 28 units at one point. Yes, 28 units at one point in the first four, uh, three months. And then uh, ever since then, it's kind of just went down downhill. But uh, yeah, we're up 10 units on the year. I'm pretty sure t around 10 units. So we're doing okay. I would have liked to have done better to be honest, man. But like I've just shown you, man, what can I do with the luck that I've had? So it is what it is. I'm not gonna cry about it, even though I just you know went on a two-minute rant about me losing uh bats because I got unlucky. Yes, I did cry about it, but uh no seriously guys. Hope you enjoyed the content, hope you liked the video. Uh subscribe if you are new and comment some of your best bats predictions or if you agree or disagree with some of my predictions down in the comments below. I will see you guys in the next one. This was a very long intro. Uh have a good day, boys. Peace. And our first fight on is going to be Andre Lima taking on Mitch Raposo. This is a very interesting fight, man. Uh, Andre Lima, you know, is a good Muay Thai striker, Muay Thai background, and I'm pretty sure he's a Bra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And, you know, in his last fight, he was taken down. He was controlled in uh, some, you know, certain uh, parts of that fight against Ihor Cervino, uh, Severino. But, uh, you know, uh, Ihor decided to turn into a vampire mid-fight and just take a chunk out of uh, uh, Andre Lima. Uh, Andre Lima's arm, as I was going to say, De Lima, but yeah, Andre Lima, Lima's arm for some reason, very interesting from, uh, <laughs> from Severino right there, but yeah, you know, he's a good Muay Thai striker, is able to control distance pretty well, uses, uh, you know, his attacks really well, uh, you, you can just tell he's from a Muay Thai background with the kicks, he uses the leg kicks, the way he's able to, you know, kind of cut off the cut off the cage very well uh good uh on his back foot and on the front foot as well as shown uh you know against Ihor for Servino in that fight able to land some good shots in him ag against the fence and against uh Rickson uh Z Zeni Dim I can't even say that name, on Dana White Contender Series, where he was cutting off the cage, landing some big shots, hurting, uh, you know, Rick's, uh, Rickson in that matchup, but yeah, uh, our, and his opponent is going to be Mitch Raposo, Mitch Raposo, man, I was watching tape on this guy, and he's, I think he's pretty good, man, I do, you know, he, he lost to Jay Cowley, but he actually had some success in that matchup against Jay Cowley, uh, you know, Jay Cowley's not great, he's not really that good, uh, you know, 1-3 in the UFC, I'm pretty sure, uh, but, you know, he's not terrible, Jay Cowley, and he had moments in that fight, was able to outstrike Jake Cowley in that first round, able to land some good shots, able to outbox Jake Cowley, able to take Jake Cowley down uh, and control him for uh, certain moments in that fight, you know, Jake Cowley is dangerous off, him, off his back and was able to get back up. But, you know, he did show that, you know, he can compete on this level for sure, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, in his last fight as well, you know, I watched that fight against, um, Justin Avilton and man he, his range control the way he's able to switch dances the culminations uh the way he's able to you know just circle out of danger back up away from danger yes this guy's not the best he's funny you know I think he's four and three uh, MMA yeah four and three so the guy's funny is not good and I don't think he'll be able to look like that against you know a guy in Andre Lima but I do think that Mitch Raposo, it is going to be on short notice, so that is a bit of a worry, a worry, but I do think he's a live underdog, man. I really do believe that Mitch Raposo is a live underdog. I think he's sitting around plus 187, let me check. Plus 175 on bat online, and then, yeah, you'll find like plus 180. That's kind of where he'll sit at. I do think that uh, as a value shot here on the dog, I do like Mitch Raposo here. Uh, I like his boxing. I like his ability to mix in his hands with his wrestling. And uh, the, the time takedowns that he showed against Jake Cali when, you know, Jake Cali would get, up, get him up against the fence, land some combinations against the fence. He was, he was able to duck under, time a takedown, and get on top. And I do think that could be a good way of mixing it up against Andre Lima, who doesn't have that high of output. And if you can get this guy on, on the ground and you know just show him that look I think that that will take away a lot of his output and I do think that Mitch Raposo has the clear better boxing in my opinion I think that Andre Lima will have the more diverse striking on the feet with the kicks with the Muay Thai clinch and stuff but I do think that Mitch Raposo has the cleaner boxing I think he has a wrestling path as well I'm not gonna say he's gonna d1 wrestle himself to victory in this matchup just by implementing wrestling only but I do think it's a good way of mixing up in this matchup and I do think that he has solid enough 
cardio. It is a bit of a worry on two weeks notice. If I, I'd be a lot more confident if, if he was taking this fight on, you know, an eight week camp, for example, but I do think that Mitch Raposa is a good underdog. It will be able to mix it up in this matchup, in my opinion. I uh, will have the better box. He is very fast as well. Good power in his hands. And, you know, just, you know, overall, quite well-rounded uh, as a mixed martial artist. So, I do like Mitch Raposo as the underdog in this matchup. So, give me Rich, Mitch Raposo by decision. I do like the under as, uh, over as well. Sorry. I think the over was... Let me just check real quick. The over uh, two and a half is minus one fifty five. I do like that to be honest. I, I really do. I think people have been betting it as well. Yeah, it, it was minus one twenty five when it came out. Very surprising. I, I would align this like minus two hundred the over to be honest. But yeah, I do like Mitra, uh, Mitra Pusu as the underdog in this matchup. So yeah. On our next fight, I, let's just keep this short and sweet. Um, Jocelyn Edwards taking on uh, Ilan Perez, the dump truck on Ilan. Well, dump truck on both. Uh, no, but seriously. Uh, Jocelyn Ad Edwards, you know, pretty good on the outside. Pretty good boxing. A lot of kicks on the outside. Uh, that's sub out, really. I mean, her take on defense isn't great. And I think that that could expose her in this fight against Ilan Perez, who will come forward and will try and get this fight down. But, yeah, you know, uh, in her last fight, Ed Edwards, you know, she probably should have won that fight. I actually banned Edwards in that fight, uh, like an absolute fool. Um, you know, betting on Edwards in any MMA fight is just uh, not Leon Edwards, by the way. Jocelyn Edwards, um, just a terrible idea, man. Very, very low level, but she isn't that bad. She's okay. You know, she was on a three five win streak. Should be on a four, to be honest. If she, you know, she got that decision against uh, Nora Canoli, but yeah, I, I'm gonna probably just I'm, I'm probably gonna just go with Perez, man. I, I haven't really done much research, I haven't really done that much tape. Very uninterested in this fight from just a betting perspective, from even watching this fight. Probably a toilet break, ship break, whatever I'm gonna be doing in this fight. Um, you know. Ellen Perez will go with the bigger dump truck and go with the person that can twerk better, I guess. Nah, I'm drilling, but you know, I think that she will be able to get the wrestling going. I think that on top, she's okay. She is a bit sloppy on top, and I think that Edwards could potentially uh, could get up and you know start you know landing her strikes because if it's a striking battle, I think that I'd favor Edwards, but. Yeah, I think that Perez will be able to get the wrestling off. I think that she will be able to get takedowns off against the fans. Uh, you know, use her aggressive style and, you know, potentially just uh, eke out a decision, 29-28, maybe a split decision. So, give me Elin Perez in this matchup. Not really trying to break this fight down for any longer, man. And our next fight is going to be Mickey Gall taking on uh, Basel Hafez. You know, Mickey Gall, man, this guy, this guy, this guy came into the UFC very young. I think, how old was he? Eight years ago, you would have been 24. You know, he came into the UFC 1 and 0. So, I mean, this guy hasn't really been able to develop as, you know, a normal, uh, you know, fighter would be able to. You know, fighting in regionals, uh, you know, able to, you know, kind of develop on the regionals. So, you know, th that potentially could have impacted his development for sure. But, you know, he's a good grapple. I'm pretty sure he's a black belt at this stage. He was a brown belt, like, a, a few years ago. So, I'm, I'm assuming he must be a black belt at this stage. And, you know, good grappler on the ground, good off his back. And when he gets on top and okay striking, but a striking defense is pretty bad. And he isn't that durable, in my opinion. I think that, you know, he, he does have a bit of a, you know, a quit button quit button there but uh yeah I, I I think that I think this is a tough matchup for him man I think that Basel uh, Hafez I'm not one of those guys that are going to be like oh this guy's really good I, I don't think Basel Hafez is good I think that he looked better than what he actually is uh in against JDM because JDM had a back-to-back -back weight cut I uh, don't know why he ever did that. You know, we know that JDM struggles to make 170 and he had to make, do a back-to-back -back weight cut there. So I do think he's probably going to be overrated coming into this fight. But, you know, I think that he will be able to get on top. He's a very strong individual, you know, very... Very strong takedowns, blast double legs, uh, okay on the feet, but big power on the feet, and puts on a very good pace, very high high pace he puts on. I think that will be able to you know get the job done over Mickey Gall, get him to the fence, uh, sorry, get him to the ground, uh, lay on top, land some big shots with his ground and point, and probably win this fight by like maybe third, second round TKO, potentially decision. Not really sure how he wins, but I do think he is able to get his wrestling game off, get his uh, top pressure uh, going in this matchup, and win this fight by decision so give me uh Basel Hafez by decision in this matchup and their next one has been Nico Price taking on Alex Moreno Nico Price man like 
this guy just, I'm, I think he's completely washed at this point, man. He's had two knee surgeries uh, on both knees. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm what we've seen from him since he's came back, man. He just does not look the same. He looks very slow, very sloppy on the feet. Yes, he's kind of always been sloppy on the feet, very awkward on the feet. But I think that, man, the past two fights against you, know, Philip Rowe and then uh, Robbie Lawler, he just looked terrible, in my opinion. And I think that. You know, taking on a guy in Alex Bruno, he is pretty tactical, you know, in all aspects of MMA. You know, you can tell this guy's a coach. I broke him down against uh, Court McGee, and I actually bet Court McGee there is a plus 275 underdog. People shot me there, and Court McGee almost won that fight 2 1, a very close third round, third round as well. But Alex Bruno did edge it uh, just by landing, the uh, landing more strikes on the better strikes in the third round. But yeah, Alex Bruno, you know, I said that, you know, I wouldn't really bet that. I, I, I mean, I said, do not be betting this guy's a minus 300 favorite in the UFC. Uh, but honestly, like, <laughs> right in this matchup, I think, like, minus 300 is. He's not minus 300, I think he's minus 225. But to be honest, man, I think that Nico Price is done. Like, really, really bad the way he's looked in the last, last two fights. Like, really, really washed. Uh, you know, against Robbie Lawler. Some people thought that was rigged, but. It is what it is. Like, even just leading up to the KU, he just looked horrible, man. And then against, like, Philip Rue, like I said, on his return after that uh, knee surgeries he's had, he looked awful in that matchup. And I think that Alex Bruno has the, you know, footwork on the outside, uh, the cleaner striking with his one twos on the pipe, the more technical in all aspects, I mean, with the better jiu-jitsu, the better wrestling, uh, the way better striking, in my opinion, from a technical aspect. And, I think that's going to be enough against Nico Price, who, in my opinion, is completely done at this level and is he is completely shot. So, going to go with Alex Bruno to win this fight by the... Uh, I'm actually going to go TKO, man. I think, that, like I said, I think that Nico Price is done. So, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go first round TKO for Alex Bruno in this matchup. I really do believe that Nico Price is done at this level, man. And our next fighter is going to be Phil Rue taking on Jake Matthews. This is a very hard fight to pick, man. Like, I wanted to pick... <laughs> it's just such a hard fight to pick. I wanted to Jake... I want to pick Jake Matthews. And I'm going to pick Jake Matthews. But it's such, like, a... Such a hard fight to pick, man. Because both these guys are pretty unreliable, man. I think that both these guys' fight IQs are pretty horrible. You know, look at Phil Rue in his last fight against, uh, you know, Neil Magny. Winning the striking exchanges pretty clearly, in my opinion. And then decides to clinch the clincher. Like, a guy that is known for that dirty clinch. That dirty boxing on the inside in Neil Magny. That's basically how he wins all of his fights. Um... Yeah, it was a very head scratching performance there from Philip Rue. Uh, is it Philip Phil Rue? Whatever. Uh, it, it, you know, good. He, but he is good at range. He is, uh, you know, pretty uh, well versed at range. But he does have a negative striking differential. And you know, against Jake Matthews, man, I think that Jake Matthews has the better combinations in my opinion. I think that he does have the better combinations, and I think that. He can potentially get off his wrestling in this fight if he is able to mix in his boxing with his wrestling. I do think that is a very, you know, clear path to victory for Jake Matthews, in my opinion, but I just can't trust him to do that. You know, only shot, let me see, uh, one takedown, I'm pretty sure, against Michael Morales, and, you know, ended up losing that fight by unanimous decision, basically just getting outstruck for the entire three rounds, so... I don't know, man. These 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 two fighters are very hard to trust with your money, so I'm just going to stay away from it. But I'm going to go with Jake Matthews, man. I think that he does have more pass to victory in this match. I think he's the more uh, I think he's the more dangerous fighter out of, the, out of the two. If one was to get a stoppage, I do think he can win this fight in the three ways. He can possibly win a fight uh, by submission, by TKO, and by decision. I think that he does have clear pass to victory in this matchup, but if it is on the feet, I do think that Phil Rowe can have success at range and potentially just outbox and outkick uh, uh, Jake Matthews the entire three rounds, but yeah, you know, if we go back to that Andre Fialho fight, you know, Jake Matthews looks like a world beater in that matchup, man. You know, I really thought after that fight, this guy's going to be a future, like, top 10 guy. I mean, uh, but then we realized, oh, Andre Fialho's absolutely horrible. So, yeah, I think that 
I think we had to pump the brakes there um, after that matchup because, you know, he's 1-2 and two after that fight, you know, beat a guy in Darius Flores who isn't should not be fighting at 170, as we've seen, he just bullied him around, uh, took him down and submitted him there, and then, uh, you know, lost to Matthew Samuelsberger, like, come on, man, uh, and then, you know, like I said, lost to Michael Morales, he's a pretty good prospect, but yeah, I can't trust anyone in this matchup, I'm going to go with Jake Matthews to win this fight by decision, implement his wrestling uh, with his striking, and yeah, win this fight, like, 29-28, maybe 30-27 in the judges' scorecards, but cannot trust him at minus 160, man. And our next fight is be Grant Dawson take on Joe Selecki. Um, this is a very interesting fight from a stylistic, stylistic standpoint. Both of these guys are pretty similar in the way they fight, you know. Both want to get this fight to the ground. Both want to use their wrestling uh, to get it to the ground, obviously, and then use their grappling. The very good grappling from both guys. But Grant Dawson, on, on one hand, you know, this guy is the definition of a crotch sniffer. This guy will shoot for single legs. If he doesn't get the take done, he'll just try and get get your back off, uh, you know, just by shooting at your legs, making you sprawl, and he'll try and work his way around to your back. One of the best back takers. Definitely, you know, maybe in that lightweight division for sure. I mean, I'm not saying he's like the best, but I'm saying like top five, top three in that lightweight division for sure. You know, is able to get the back very well in fights, is able to just ride out the control time and potentially get a submission. But I do think his cardio is pretty bad, man. I think that his cardio is pretty bad as shown in that Ricky Glenn fight. You know, he was absolutely dead in that fight, round three when that came. And I think his striking is a bit stiff like very robotic in his striking but he ha it has been improving and it, you can kind of tell it's been improving over time and then Juice like in their hand I think he will be the better striker off the two but I think that I think that Grant Dawson will be able to just get the takedowns man I think that he'll be he will be able to get the takedowns he's working with high level guys at American top team now he has been improving in in his fights uh when he's uh went to American top team uh, you know, training with guys like Armin Suriki and Dustin Poirier, Matej Gamrot. So he has very, he has a lot of uh, you know bodies to work with, uh, especially around his weight class. So I think that Grant Dawson will be able to get the takedowns in this matchup. We'll be able to ride out some control time and win this fight, maybe thirty twenty seven, but. I am not opposed to playing Drew Selecki round three, man. I am really not opposed to playing, uh, you know. Uh, Drew Selecki by round 3 TKO or something like that because we have seen Grant Dawson almost die in the third round against Gr uh, Ricky Glenn where he got 10 needed and it was basically a draw because it cancelled each other out so at the first and second round that Grant Dawson won and the 10 at the Ricky Glenn won so yeah I, I do think that they're you know uh, there is a potential, you know, cardio issue and striking issue for Grant Dawson in this matchup, but I think that he has the better wrestling, the better grappling, uh, to maintain top position and potentially, you know, just ride out a decision in this matchup. So, give me Grant Dawson by decision in this matchup. And their next one is going to be Roman Kopolov to get on Caesar Almeida. Both of these guys, man, I'm very good at predicting these guys' fights, man. Like, let me go through Roman Kopolov's uh, record here real quick. So, Roman Kopolov... Adam Max Bell on him against Ribeiro. That made it, I think it was like 4 0 Max bets at the time. We're 9 1 right now. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, Max Bell him against uh, Claudio Ribeiro. Um, you know, bet him against Josh Framd. Bet against him with Anthony Hernandez. That Anthony Hernandez fight might literally be the worst stylistic matchup for him in the division. That counts for any person in the, the division, quite literally. A guy that's going to put, put him on the back foot, a guy that's going to walk him down. Uh, you know, cross that kickboxing distance, uh, you know, kicking range that he's very good at, uh, Roman Kopolov, and just attack his cardio that, you know, his cardio is not the best, and his, you know, take down defense is okay, but like I said, his cardio does fade when he's made to work, and I think that in this matchup, man, you know, it's a very interesting matchup, both of these guys are going to be kickboxers, and I think that Roman Kopolov is going to win this fight, man. I, I really do. I, I I don't really understand the odds at minus 125 for Roman Kopolov. And I'm a guy that has picked Cesar Almeida, man. You know, I picked Cesar Almeida in his Dana White Contender Series fight. Lucas Fernando, I'm pretty pretty sure he was a plus 200 underdog. Showed pretty good take on defense. Okay striking in that matchup. Not really the best striking. Yes, he is a glory uh, kickboxer in that fight particularly. And then Dylan Budkip. I said, I bro broke that fight down so perfectly, man. If you guys haven't seen, I said that this guy's going to try and crotch sniff 
and then gas himself away and then uh you know Almeida would be able to take over and that's exactly what happened so yeah you know I, I am going to pick Roman Kopolov. I think that w from what I've seen in MMA, this is MMA, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that Roman Kopolov ha it has been the better striker from what I've seen, uh, in my opinion. But it's going to be a very interesting fight, man. I, I think that Roman Kopolov is potentially the more dangerous fighter uh, as well. In my opinion, I think he has the more powerful strikes. I think he's going to be the bigger striker as well. And he'll be the younger uh, fighter in this matchup uh, uh, as well. So I'm going to pick Roman Kopolov uh, by... Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go by decision, but it's a very interesting fight, man. I think that from what I've seen of Cesar Almeida in MMA, he is very good with his body shots. In you know, Glory, from what I've seen, from uh, from what I've watched, uh, good in the clinch as well in Glory. So that will obviously transition well into MMA. But from what I've seen in MMA, I think that Roman Kopolov is the better striker and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Roman Kopolov to uh, out kickbox, the glory kickboxer in this matchup, which is crazy to say, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Roman Kopolov by decision in this matchup. And I, 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 like I said, I picked these guys pretty well. I knew both of these guys' styles uh, very well, but I think that Roman Kopolov uh, has the more powerful strikes on the outside. He has the better... Uh, I, I wouldn't say the better, but I, I just like his... I, I think he has more of a finishing upside in this matchup. Uh, so, and, you know, Roman Kopolov, that's where he wants to be. He wants to be in the kickboxing. Both of these guys want to be in the kickboxing, but, you know, from what we've seen, man, in Roman Kopolov's last few fights at kickboxing range, he's, like, nasty. So, gonna go with Roman Kopolov by decision in this matchup. And the next fight is be Randy Brown taking on Zaleski Dos Santos. Randy Brown, man, you know, this guy's a crisp striker on the outside. Will, you know, use that reach very well. Use that jab, that 1-2 down the pipe very well. And just the overall pretty good boxer with a solid BJJ uh, when he needs to use it, of course. But... Uh, I do think there are holes in his striking from a defensive aspect. You know, he, he is good defensively until he's not, basically, if that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, he does make some questionable decisions when he's, you know, striking. He has his hands very low at times. You know, when he's in his flow state, he does get caught at, at times. And, you know, against, like, JDM, for example. Yes, JDM's one of the best boxers in the welterweight division. But, you know, had his hands very low there. And I do think there's openings for a guy like Zaleski Dos Santos to catch Randy Brown in the chin. I think that Zaleski Dos Santos, as a underdog in this matchup, I think he's a must-play, to be honest. I really do like Zaleski Dos Santos as, like, a plus-180 underdog, whatever he is now, as a value play. Um... I, I really like that this spot for Zaleski Dos Santos, in my opinion. I think he's going to be the more dangerous striker, which I really, you know, look towards when I am, uh, you know, batting a underdog. I, I like guys that, you know, can win in multiple ways by decision uh, and by KU. And I think that Zaleski Dos Santos is going to be the more dangerous striker. Will have the more par, uh, in my opinion. Yes, he is going to be the older guy, but, you know, against, uh, you know, Renat Frecordino, I, I actually bet Zaleski Dos Santos. I was telling everyone, this Renat dude is a complete fraud. Man, and I, I said Renat was a fraud when he was like dominating everyone because if you watch Renat Fekardinov, uh, you know, shoot takedowns, this guy shooting takedowns like that, like he's completely like you know, shooting takedowns head first, and that's just terrible, terrible, terrible technique right there. So, I knew a guy with the takedown defense of Skolaski dos Santos and the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu of Skolaski dos Santos would cause a guy like Renat Fekardinov problems and ended up being a draw, but realistically, you know, Zaleski won the fight, if that makes sense, but it was a draw, you know, it was, it was a fair result, but Zaleski should have, you know, he was the victor, if that makes sense, of the actual fight, so, yeah, I think that Zaleski de Santos is a very live underdog, man, I, I, I think he has the power edge, I think that, you know, Randy Brown is hittable at times, and I think that, uh, as an underdog, I, I, I like that uh, Zaleski de Santos doesn't have to be perfect for the entire 15 minutes, where, you know, as Randy Brown has to be, you know, kind of perfect for the entire 15 minutes to, uh, you know, win this fight. So, give me Zaleski Dos Santos by uh, TKO round two in this matchup. And our next fight is going to be Jelton Almeida taking on Alexander Romanov. Jelton Almeida, a former uh, lock, or not lock, former uh, <laughs> Max Bet uh, opponent. You know, I, I Max Bet Curtis Blades at minus one town, and what a bet that was. You're actually lucky, though. You're lucky, bookies. I was going to Max Bet Curtis Blades at plus 187 when the fight was first announced. And then, of course, Derek Lewis shows that Jilton Almeida isn't that guy. And, of course, to pick him in the rematch. Of course, my luck like that, but... 
Yeah, you know, Jilton and Mena, man. Even though he lost to uh, Curtis Blades, I wasn't overly like, wow, this guy sucks. Um, I, I kind of just came away from the fight. This guy is just such a such a ball sniffer, to be honest. That's the only thing I came away with in that fight. Jilton and you know, solid wrestling, man. Very good wrestling, uh, you know, for a guy that is more of a jiu-jitsu guy and very strong, good, uh, you know, uh, variety of takedowns, trips, single legs, double legs, uh, that snap kick to the double leg and... Yeah, very explosive takedowns, uh, you know, as seen in basically every single fight he's ever been in in the UFC. But he's taking on a guy, Alexander Romanov, who has very good, you know, uh, uh, what, what what's it called? It's uh, like Sambu, uh, Judo, like, yeah, Judo. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, he's very good Judo, uh, very good, you know, throws. But his cardio is absolutely horrible. And from what we've seen of Jilton Ahmed, his cardio is actually not that bad. He is able to keep up a pretty good pace, uh, surprisingly, for, you know, how big he is. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Jilton Ahmed. I think that he will be able to get get his game off as the fight goes on. I think that his striking actually is okay. I think that Alexander Romanov striking is okay, but I think that Jilton Ameda has the more athletic striking, if that's what I'm looking for, you know, just the more athletic striking uh, out of the two. I think he has the better striking, I think he has the faster striking, and I think that as the fight goes on, he will be able, he will be able to get those takedowns as the fight goes on, and I think that he will be will be able to get on top and potentially finish Alexander Romanov like round two or three, so give me Jilton Almeida by, I'm going to go TKO round two and three by ground and point, uh, round two or three ground and point, so yeah, I don't really know what, uh, you know, version of Alexander Romanov we're going to get. I don't know if we're going to get the, uh, just the absolute fat mess off Romanov or we're going to get the guy that actually has looked pretty good, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, his shape, so, yeah, I'm not really sure which Romanov we're going to get in this matchup, but e either way, I'm going to go with Jilton Ameda, uh, I just think he's better in the areas that Alexander Romanov, uh, is kind of in, so, Give me a jilt in a minute by uh, TKO round two. At our next one is we Kevin Holland taking on Mikhail Ulyzhezhuk. Uh, interesting fight. You know, in the middleweight division, Kevin Holland is moving on, but I do think that kind of makes sense, man. You know, this guy's never going to fight for a belt. It doesn't seem to have that motivation to fight for a belt. It doesn't seem to have that, uh, you know, drive to ever be a champion and live up to his, like, full potential. I'm not saying his full potential is to be a champion, but I do think his full potential is to, you know, be a top top eight guy in that welterweight division, to be honest, and, and like, a staple in the top eight. But I feel like Kevin Holland just... Is never gonna live up to his expert. Uh, live up to his, uh, you know what what everyone thinks he he was going to be. If that makes sense in his career. So, yeah, you know I do make it does make sense that he is moving up to one eighty five here against Mikhail Ujejshuk. Uh, you know Kevin Holland, very rangey striker, good range. Uh, you know good kicks, side kicks, front kicks up the middle. Uses range pretty well. Uh, he lands on the end of his punches really well. And I do think that is going to be a factor in this matchup. I think that Mikhail Ujejshuk, uh, from what I've heard, I think he actually trains with with his IRL friends, which is uh, not really a good look. So it doesn't seem like both either of these guys are you know fully focused in uh, having a good MMA career for themselves. And I do think that Kevin Holland is just a better fighter overall. I think he has the more diverse striking on the feet. I think he has the better striking on the feet. And I could potentially see like a club and sub situation for Kevin Holland, you know, hurting Mikhail Ujejshuk and potentially like, like submitting him like, uh, you know, Michelle Pereira did to Mikhail Ujejshuk uh, a few months ago. So, I do like Kevin Holland in this matchup. I wouldn't really be betting him because, like I said, you can't trust this dude with your money. This guy, you know, just trolls and fights, to be honest. You know, will act like, oh, I didn't really try that fight when he lost. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. But, yeah, going to go with Kevin Holland. I think he's the better striker. I think he's the overall better mixed martial artist in this matchup. And I think he's the more durable fighter out of the two. Mikhail Ujejshuk has been stopped uh, in his last few, uh, few losses, I'm pretty sure. Let me check. Uh... So, uh, yeah, he's been stopped in his last few losses, so I think that uh, Kevin Holland is a more durable out of the two, and I think that uh, he will have the better striking to get a stoppage in this matchup, uh, second round finish for Kevin Holland in this fight. And our next fight is we have Sean Strickland taking on Paulo Costa. I basically made up my mind on this fight uh, a few moments ago, maybe even right now. <laughs> I'm going to go with Paulo Costa, man. I think that Paulo Costa 
is going to be the more dangerous striker coming into this fight, man. It is five rounds, which does favor Sean Strickland. You know, the cardio, the output, the pace that he puts on, guys, the forward pressure. But I think to... The one thing I'm going to say is the body shots off Paulo Costa coming into this fight, man. You know, Sean Strickland is a hard guy to hit clean, but I think going to the body like, you know, a guy in Alex Pereira did is going to open up that shot to the head, uh, uh, you know, on Sean Strickland. You know, I think that uh, Paulo Costa can land the combination to the body and potentially open up a head strike that will hurt and put away Sean Strickland. I am going to say that Paulo Costa's striking uh, power is a bit overrated, I'll be honest. You know, he has to land, you know, a big combination to hurt his opponents, you know, against like Uriah Hall, for example, uh, and, and other previous fights. You know, he has to land a combination to put guys away in fights, which, you know, again, is a bit of a worrying sign. You know, Sean Strickland is pretty durable. But I'm going to go with a guy that's going to be landing the harder shots. I think his cardio is pretty good, Polo Costa. It's obviously not as good as Sean Strickland, but it's very underrated, his cardio, man. He's able to push a very, you know, good three-round pace. He's able to go five rounds, as we, uh, you know, seen against Marvin Vittoria at a very high pace. and was able to win that round five, I'm pretty sure. So, he does put on a very good pace. You know, his output is pretty high, especially early on, man. His output is crazy earlier on, early on. So, you know, I think that, you know, uh, Paulo Costa to the body and uh, to the head mid-combination is going to be a big factor coming into this match. And I think that Sean Strickland uh, is going to be open to that, as we've seen against, you know, like I said... Um, uh, Alex Pereira, yes, Alex Pereira is just a different level of striker compared to Paulo Costa, but I think it's a weakness in uh, Sean Strickland's style, you know, he does like to parry a lot of his shots uh, like that, if that makes sense, and I think the body is going to be there, and I think that, you know, that will lower uh, Sean Strickland's hands, and I think like a big left hook over the top, kind of like, uh, you know, Alex Pereira, I'm, not, I'm really not trying to say Paulo Costa is on the same level of Alex Pereira. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say, like, um, I think he can win the fight in a similar way to how Alex Pereira can win it because his style, you know, is, uh, you know, a, a very in my opinion, pretty hard a style for Sean Strickland. I think that the kicks as well, the switch kick to the body, you know, Sean Strickland isn't really that good at dealing with low leg kicks. Uh, you know, Polo Costa slams low leg kicks, as we know, has a very nasty switch kick to the body. Good, uh, you know, uh, rear, uh, you know, uh, roundhouse kick to the body, good high kicks, and I think the overall diversity in the striking is going to favor Paulo Costa, and I think he can win the early rounds and maybe win a, 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 a round later on in this matchup. Uh, so I'm going to go with Paulo Costa by, uh, I'm going to go by decision. Uh, that's kind of crazy to say. Uh, how am I going to go by decision? Because like I said, I think that you can catch Sean. I'm going to do like third or second round TKO for Paulo Costa. I think he's going to you know, condition Sean Strickland to get that guard low and land a big left hook over the top. Uh, so give me Paulo Costa by second round TKO in this matchup. And our ne next fight of night is going to be Islam Ashev taking on Dustin Poirier for the lightweight title. Going to keep this short and sweet. I think Islam Mahashev wins this fight. I think that, you know, on the feet, I, I, I'm going to favor Dustin Poirier for sure. I think that for Islam Mahashev to find the finish on the feet, that would be pretty, pretty incredible. You know, Islam Mahashev, former uh, Max Bet, uh, you know, uh, you know, fighter. <laughs> I think he made it like five or six and oof for us on max bets against Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, I, I just thought, you know, I actually picked Islam Mahashev by KU in that matchup as well. I thought that Alexander Volkanovsky uh, was fighting a a depleted guy in Islam Mahashev in that first fight. You know, Islam Mahashev, in my opinion, was completely depleted in that fight, and I thought that was not the Islam Mahashev that you know would become accustomed to. So. Uh, yeah, I think that Islam Ashev could have success on the feet because obviously that takedown, uh, that takedown threat that he possesses. But if he decides to strike with this man, I, I don't know what he's doing. I'll be honest. I think that if he shoots, he can get a takedown. I think that you know the single leg that he has, obviously the sambo and the clinch with the trips and stuff, uh, and the throws that he has and the clinch is very very good. And I think that striking on the feet with you know a guy like Dustin Poirier, who's literally. He's an impossible guy to brawl with. You cannot beat Dustin Poirier in a brawl. You know, I actually bet Dustin Poirier in a brawl. Uh, in a brawl. I bet Dustin Poirier in his last fight against Benoit saint because, you know, you know, Benoit, you know, he does brawl at times. And I think that 
I, I thought that, you know, if he's going to brawl against Dustin Poirier, Dustin Poirier is going to put his lights out, and that's exactly what happens. So, yeah, I think that Islam Mahashev is defensively on the feet, is very good. His footwork on the outside is very good and stays away from danger very well. But uh, if he stands with uh, Dustin Poirier, he's given Dustin Poirier a chance to win. So, I do think Islam Mahashev gets his fight to the ground, is able to, you know, control it in the first, maybe second round, and then potentially find this uh, submission round three. Uh, you know, as, you know, Dustin Poirier, you know, kind of is starting to. Uh, you know, you know, slow down, you know, trying to get Islam Mahashev, who's very, very strong, very good with the pressure that he, that he has on top, and I just like Islam Mahashev's uh, ability to transition to dominant positions and look for a submission. He's not a ground and point guy, so that's why I actually bet uh, Islam Mahashev by submission. Don't usually give out my bets during a breakdown video, but I did bet Islam Mahashev by submission. Plus 110, I'm not really worried about the ground and pound, he doesn't really have a ground and pound heavy style, and we know that Dustin Poirier doesn't have the best takedown defense, not the best get up game, and not the best submission defense either, so Islam Mahashev by submission round 3 is going to be the official pick, if Islam Mahashev decides to stand with Dustin Poirier, you know he can't have success for sure because of the takedown defense, uh, takedown as threat that he has, but it would just be a dumb thing to do, in my opinion, against a guy that is very good uh, in like a you know brawling type thing to make a fight a brawl. Uh, you know, a very good boxing as well. Uh, but if it's a pure like kickboxing fight, I'm gonna go with Dustin Poirier all day. But yeah, like, in an MMA, you know, f kickboxing fight, you know, it could be very interesting. But I think that Islam Mahashev, you know, he's part of a very high IQ camp with Habib, with Javier Hernandez. And, you know, with that Russian coach, I forgot I forgot his name, but, you know, they, they will put a good game plan together here, and uh, I think that he will find a submission in that second or third round. So, give me a some Ashev by round three uh, submission. So there you guys have it. There was my breakdown and predictions for UFC 302. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That is much appreciated. I will see you guys for my betting podcast on Wednesday and my best bets video on Friday. And yeah, guys, have a good rest of your week. Enjoy, uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the rest of your week. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, like I already said. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good day. Peace.